What if the assessment tools we're using are missing the bigger picture? Hi, I'm Dr. Megan and I guide people in growing, learning, and cultivating connection and curiosity. And today I want to talk about some of the commonly used interventions within the field of behavior analysis and then also often in educational settings, usually focused on early intervention, preschool, kindergarten aged classrooms, especially for autistic children and autistic clients. One of the things I think we need to focus on when we're engaging in some philosophical doubt and reflection about these commonly used assessments like the ABLES and the VB map, most specifically, those are the two that I see used the most often, is why were these created in the first place? How were these skills determined? And do they align with the current research that exists in 2024 around what skills are important. Given that both of these assessments were initially conceived of in the late 90s and then published, uh, the, the ABLES R and the VB map became two separate assessments once the, the ABLES was done, <laughs> if you will, in the early 2000s. So it's been about 20 years since these assessments were published and they haven't been revised. There's not like a second edition that's come out. I'm wondering how much do they align with the current research and our understanding of autism? Spoiler alert, they don't. But it's not to be critical of these specific assessments and it's not to say they don't have their place in helping to promote certain skills for behavior analysts and understanding some of the things they might need to attend to when they're developing their interventions. But if we go into our practices thinking that these assessments are in line with the current research and that they're the best for identifying the skills that our clients might need to learn, we're obviously misunderstanding the point of these assessments. The original point of these assessments was really just to give folks a, a starting place to create skill sets for clients to fit them into typical classrooms. The skills were determined based on what people were clinically working on at the time, and that was the ultimate goal of service delivery in the 90s, was to mainstream, to make children indistinguishable from their peers, and the skills were chosen based on these are the types of things we see kindergartners doing. So these are the skills we should work on teaching. They weren't necessarily based on research about autism, what's most beneficial for autistic children, especially not older than five, right? So for older learners, not looking at that either. And again, this isn't a specific criticism. These things definitely have their place and especially had their place in the 90s and early 2000s when we didn't really have anything else to work off of for folks who were trying to provide intervention and make sure that they were working on the types of things we thought needed to be worked on at the time. But now we know quite a bit more about a variety of things. And we know that the skills that are most necessary for creating self-advocacy and really building those low stress learning environments really have nothing to do with what's in the VB map or the ABLES. Some of the things do, especially with requesting and building some like basic vocabulary, but the overall skills, especially with having social communication skills, those aren't represented in these assessments. And the assessments are not strength-based. I don't really know of many assessments that are strength-based that really focus on looking at what strengths a person has and then building intervention accordingly to highlight those strengths and teach based off of those strengths. I could go on for a whole nother <laughs> hour or longer on this topic in particular, but I'm going to go ahead and end there. So the main point being, I'm not saying you have to stop using these assessments. I just hope to encourage everyone to really be thinking about how were these designed? Are the skills that are being assessed here really the ones that are most beneficial? for the clients you're serving, and how, if you are going to keep using them, you can make them more strength-based and aligned with the current research on autism, especially around social communication and active engagement. If this topic is something that interests you, I'm going to keep talking about it, so please give me a follow.